Greetings, Cleveland, and welcome to Creative Focus, the show that illuminates some of Cleveland's most talented and creative artists across the genres of film, dance, music, theater, and visual arts. I'm your host, Cornell Calhoun III, and today I am thrilled to have on Creative Focus award-winning photographer, Mr. Dan Morian. Dan, welcome to Creative Focus. Let's chop it up. <laughs> Boy, he makes me sound good. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate uh, the opportunity to be here on your show. Honor, honored to have you. Mm -hmm. So Dan and I are neighbors. We uh, dwell at the Tower Press Development, 1900 Superior Avenue, artist uh, complex right across the street from the old, the old Plain Dealer building. So mm -hmm. Dan, how long have you, how long have you lived in the, in that complex? I have had my studio in the complex. These are live work studios, but they um, I do not live in. I live in Lakewood, but I use it for a studio. And um, I've been there for a little, about 12 years. Okay, so we're about the same time. I will be there 12 years in June. Okay. I, I love the building. I wish I had moved in there 20 years ago. Great, mm -hmm. great building, great tenants, yeah. um, great landlords, Karen mm -hmm. and Dave Perkowski. Right. Um, Quick, quick question. Do you think that we'll have an art show this year? I know we did prior to the pandemic. Um, are there any plans to have an art show there? Well, you know? that's a tough question. Okay. You're going to start me off with the hard question, okay? <laughs> <laughs> well, we have, we've had a hard time getting things started again since the, the pandemic and you know, these new variants that keep coming out, it's kind of sure. dragging people down and slowing things down. Um, I, I was, um, I led the artist group, you know, and right. we had meetings every month for um, the 10 years that I was in charge. And uh, the pandemic hit and we have not regrouped. And um, I was ready to kind of retire from the leadership role anyway. So nobody's kind of taken the helm uh, okay. to make, make, make it all get started again. Okay. And Karen, our landlord, wants to help, but uh, we, need, we need someone to step up. So about how many artists do we have in the building uh, right now on that fir first floor? But I guess there are artists um, on the second and third floor, of course, because I live on the second floor. Yeah. So, but how many artists, art studios are on the first floor right. of that building? The, um, we call them artist live work spaces, okay. um, and there are 16 of them on the first floor. And um, I would say maybe a little more than half of the people actually live in the spaces, um, and the rest are kind of like myself. They they live out of, out of you know out in the suburbs or something like that. But um, during the uh, you know we're able to uh, do their their studio work, like I'm a photographer and we take pictures, I take pictures in the studio, my wife would not want me at home <laughs> setting up my camera and the lighting in, the, in our apartment, you know. So it's really great to have the studio downtown in, the, in a really wonderful location. So, so how did you get started in photography? I mean, you know, I remember um, when I was a young man, I loved uh, photography. I had a, a Yashica and then I graduated to a Nikon mm -hmm. and I had one of those big lenses that I would slap on that Yashica to make myself look important. Uh, so how did you get into photography? Well, I was lucky because both my father and my mother are creative people. Uh, my father was, uh, he operated a commercial art and photography studio downtown and he wanted my older brother to become the photographer. For some reason, his sense was my older brother would be the photographer. And so for Christmas one year, he had me paint a tool room in the basement, all black, and create a dark room in our basement and surprised my brother on Christmas Eve. Well, it turns out that, uh, you know, he took an interest, but I was his assistant at that time. And I was only about you know, 10 or 12 years old. Wow. And I, when I first, first saw the the uh, pictures develop in the tray, I was amazed by the magic of photography and uh, the picture just appearing on the paper. Right, right. So I, I, I took the love for it and my brother, my brother Greg, who, who I was, you know, we, we thought was going to be the photographer, is in commercial real estate. <laughs> <laughs> so he didn't take it very long. He was good at it and he liked it, but he didn't stick with it. He didn't stick with it. So 
How would you define the artistic community um, of downtown Cleveland? Is, is it vibrant? Is it, uh, I know COVID had a lot to do with some of the down uh, trends, but how, how would you just describe it generally? I would say that there is, is a lot of enthusiasm in a, a small percentage of the arts community. I think what's happened is a lot of the uh, arts community um, has, has had a hard time motivating and getting back into it. Um, I actually thought in the beginning of the pandemic that I, my creativity would be, it would give me all this time to do things, you know, my ideas, you know, come up with all these new things. But it really didn't. I, I spent most of my time during the pandemic trying to figure out how I was going to pay my bills. <laughs> so <laughs> like it was very people. frustrating. Right. Um, and so, and I think that discouraged a lot of artists. And, and people are slow to recover. But there are some people, like in in every profession, there's people who are very motivated and, and people who have done a great job. Um, there's a, a magazine, an organization called CAN, C-A-N. Um, they're such good branders that I don't even remember what CAN stands for, but uh, they're an <laughs> arts organization that, that, that has done a good job keeping artists together, and they, they promote themselves through this magazine. Um, I would say the, um, over on the, the near west side, um, there's a couple of arts organizations. 78th Street Studios is doing a good job keeping things going and keeping the energy going. And there, isn't there a, a, an art building near us? Because I remember one time I saw you and you were taking your art to be displayed at this build. Is it, what, what's yes. that build, building? That's the Art Craft Building. Uh, right, the Art Craft now Building. Now they're down near the inner belt. Now they're still part of the Superior Arts District, which is the, the name that um, I, I almost interrupted you to tell you. Um, the actual designation by the, the, by the city um, several years ago designated our area from Superior Avenue at East 18th all the way to the inner belt which is around 35th Street. Mm -hmm. So there's like 15 to 20 blocks that are called the Superior Arts District and um, the uh, Art Craft Building is part of that and it's a huge building. It's a mammoth old building that recently just like uh, several other buildings on our street have been renovated and they're going to be fixed up and hopefully there's still going to be some art studios in there. I know oh. that they want to make apartments out of these places too and it's kind of forcing some of the art artists a little bit okay. out because of the pricing, you know. Okay. So but it's good for the neighborhood. Yeah, it's great for the neighborhood. Yeah. Do you have any formal training or were you self-taught or how? Well, thanks for that question. That's a good one. Um, yes, my interest in photography got me um, Actually, all the way through high school, I was more interested in um, math and science. I was a STEM guy, and um, so I went to the University of Dayton to start an engineering program um, in Dayton, Ohio. But um, gosh, right away, my second year of college, I, I, I was through trying to memorizing all, memorize all <laughs> those formulas and everything. So I, and I liked, the, I liked the artistic kids, the creative kids in my, my other classes. So they had a great photography program at the University of Dayton. And so I ended up graduating as a photography major. So um, I won't say that that's really what, what got me um, the experience I needed, though. I don't think college is absolutely necessary for a photography career. It, it's nice because you, you learn a lot about you know, your fellow students and things like that. But it's not absolutely necessary. Um, you learn photography by doing it. Uh, I was an assistant photographer for a couple of years before I started my own business. What qualities do you think uh, a good photographer needs? Well, uh, you have to have an eye. It's, it's almost like, uh, you know, some people have uh, this funny thing where they, they like to, all right, like I'll go over to a friend's house and I'll see that their coffee table just needs a little bit of straightening. And I, go, I get down there, <laughs> there's a name for that, I forget, ADT or <laughs> ADD or something. And I, can, and I, just, I, I just, oh no, uh, obsessive compulsive disorder. <laughs> what I do is when I see somebody, even at a friend's house, if their pictures are not straight, I'll straighten the pictures, you know. So I have this certain way of seeing a, all these principles of design that I, that I actually did learn in college. 
Um, and if something looks unbalanced, I'll straighten it out. Like you've got a nice job in the studio, and when, even setting up the pictures in here, I saw you had a couple of your guys are really good at that. Oh, yeah, you have to nice. have an eye. You yeah. have to, and it, and it doesn't come from nowhere. It partially comes from you know what you have inside of you, and it's also part, it also comes from seeing art and reading a lot of books and seeing what looks good and uh, and and learning that way. See, see, yeah, our crew is just fantastic. Uh -huh. I, don't, I don't touch anything. I let them handle it. I know because well, I because they they know. I don't, they're I don't professionals. Have, I don't have a clue. Right, they're yeah. professionals. So, what do you like most about photography and taking pictures? I tell you, um, I am a commercial photographer, so um, I make sure that I get paid for the jobs that I shoot. So I don't really like. You know, coming up with my own ideas and going out and taking pictures. I like when somebody who is a friend of mine who I've met somewhere in my career, and they maybe started selling some kind of product, and they need a good picture of this product so that they can build a website. So the pictures that I take, or they need a good picture of themselves, like an executive portrait, so that they you know can have the About Us page on their website look good because they need a good picture. They don't want to put a selfie on their, you know, right, their right. About Us page. Right. They want a good professional photograph. And their product, it needs good professional pictures of. And so when I am able to do that for somebody and I see them succeed by using my pictures, their business succeeds and they make money, that way I was paid and what I did helped them make more money. So it really kind of makes it all kind of comes around. So and that's exciting. So I'm gonna put you on the spot. Mm. Take away the commercial mm -hmm. aspect of it. I can't do that. You can't do that. <laughs> I can't do you that. You can't do that. So in other words, you even starting out, you didn't have a, like a subject or something that you would enjoy more um, um, taking a photograph of. Oh yes, I've always had one subject. I am. Cleveland. Cleveland. I've always loved photographing Cleveland to try to promote my city. I've always had civic pride. I started a whole program when I was younger. I called it Cleveland Pride, and the actual name Pride has changed over the years, so people don't even understand that button anymore. Right, right. <laughs> because it's really point, about yeah. civic pride right. um, is what I'm selling in Cleveland. And so um, that, you know, and that hasn't left me. I've watched these, you know, when I first started taking pictures of Cleveland, there was only one tower there, one building. And I watched these buildings come up in town, and they keep taking new pictures when the, build, when the skyline changes. We've got a new building going up right now. And uh, I've got to update all my pictures. <laughs> but I have what, what's called the Cleveland Collection, and these are Cleveland pictures that I have, a whole collection of Cleveland pictures that I've been shooting um, for my whole career for the last 40 years. And I have a, a place people can go on, you know, right from my home page of my website that they can see those Cleveland pictures. But that's my passion with my fine art. And, and which, what's that website? Give, give us that website. So Straightshooter.com. Straightshooter.com. Yeah, www.straightshooter.com. Straightshooter is my commercial business name, and that's my commercial website. But right on the home page, you can see down near the bottom that the, you click on this picture to see all my Cleveland pictures. Okay, so if someone wanted to contact you about uh, a photography job, they could go on that website and get yes, the Yes, you'll get see the email address you just click on, or you can call, and also my phone number, my cell phone number. Call my cell phone number or text me anytime. And what is, what is the cell phone number? Area code 646-621-6434. And uh, that 646 area code is from when I lived in New York City for eight years. Oh, wow. And that's, people don't understand that area code, but you know, today's world it doesn't even matter. People have phone, phone numbers from all over the place. So. Okay, give, give me that one more time. Area code 646-621-6434. Okay, so that's the number if you want to contact Dan. You can send me a, a, a text or call me at that number. Okay, so what would you say is the least um, thing that you like about photography or don't like about photography? What would be the, the difficulty, the difficult part of, of being a photographer? I have a pretty easy answer for that one. It's making a living. And uh, I've already touched on that because I, I'm a commercial photographer. I wait for people to pay me to take pictures of something that they need. 
Um, that's the way I've been able to pay my bills for 40 years, self-employed. And so the business aspect of what I do is the most challenging because you have to, everywhere I go, I meet people, I always have cards in my pocket, I have to sell myself to people. And that gets a little wearing after a long time. You start, you know, people start to avoid you because they think you're going to sell them something. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it's, it's a little uncomfortable, but um, it was kind of driven into me from my father to, to sell. You have to sell. Dan, what would you say is your biggest strength as a, as a photographer? I just have an eye. Eye for composition. And, you know, and that, like I said, it, to a fault, I go over to friends' houses and I rearrange their furniture, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, and, and while I'm doing it, they get a little uncomfortable, but when I'm done, they're like, wow, this place looks great now. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's simple things to me. Somehow I can walk into a room and I can make it look better. That's, it's a gift. I can make a bunch of, I can throw a whole box of products on a table and rearrange them so they look good as a grouping. Okay, so you brought a couple pieces of your work in today. Cleveland. Let's, uh, let, yeah, Cleveland, yeah. Let, let, let's talk about, let's talk about them. Okay. Um, so the first one behind you. This is called Angry Lake. And uh, I live in Lakewood and, and my, on my trip downtown, I, um, I drive along the shoreway, so I see the lake all the time, every day. <clears throat> and this was a, a cold November day, and um, I saw this big freighter out on the lake. And I, I'm fascinated by those big, giant ships we have on the lake. So I pulled over real quick and, and, and drove into Edgewater Park, and I, I got on the pier there, went out to the end of the pier, and, and pointed my camera at, with a tripod. I happened to have some of this equipment with me. So I took pictures of the freighter, and, and I was happy with that, but I turned around and this is how I saw, <laughs> I just happened to see the city of Cleveland. I, that, it was an unintended you know, advantage that day. As I saw how beautiful the Cleveland skyline looked that day with all these waves crashing on the water. So I called this one Angry Lake because that's what happens to our lake sometimes. And, and what year was that photograph? Uh, uh, 2012. 2012, yeah. okay. And what about the one behind me? That picture over there was about 2016. And that was shortly after the um, beach house at Edgewater Park was completed. And uh, the Metro Parks has done such an amazing job with the Metro Parks. And they hired a really good architectural firm, which is escaping me right now. But I have given them credit many times, um, whoever the um, architect is. But they made this beautiful beach house. And, and at that time, when that was first completed, I knew that that was going to be a, a, a special angle. But um, I was also paid a couple times over for that picture because the angle is what uh, a lot of companies like to, you know, show the Cleveland skyline in their uh, websites to show their civic pride. And, and what is the title of that photograph? I call it Edgewater Beach House because that was the first, that was right after it was completed and it, it, it really kind of sets that picture aside. And you know, set that picture off because you see that on the right edge of the picture and all the way over to the new stadium on the left side of the picture. Okay, so what do you think is, uh, what would you say is your greatest accomplishment as a photographer? What would you hang your hat on, in your opinion? Okay, I'm going to go back to the same topic we've been talking about, it's making a living. Um, I've been self-employed for 40 years and not have had to rely on any um, regular job, you know, and a lot of people say, oh, Dan, it's great you don't have a boss, and I mean, I, of course, am my own boss, but every client is a boss, so it's not, self-employment is not just uh, uh, that easy at all. It's very difficult, and if you can keep it going and pay your bills um, and stay in business for 40 years, uh, my head's off to you as well. And what would you tell uh, some young person who might have an interest in photography, who might want to be a, a photographer? What, what advice would you give that person? Well, I encourage um, artists uh, to look into the photography field um, because there are ways, um, whether it's weddings or portraits, there's a lot of areas of photography you can make a decent living. But you have to be prepared 
to do the work and be social and and make that make those sales calls you know even when you're at a party just talk to your friends and find out if they need photography at their company where they work and because you know you got to you got to make a little bit of money each time you shoot because you got to pay your bills this equipment's not cheap uh, what projects are you working on now are, is there anything um, that you can discuss? You know, or? when people ask me that, sometimes it's really glamorous and interesting because I'm doing a fashion shoot or something like that for a jewelry company. But uh, other times, you know, like just last week, I had to go to a, a company in Akron that converts regular vans, large oversized vans, like even high quality vans like Mercedes Benz, they convert these into even mobile offices. They change the, the their their business is changing these vans from, you know, just an empty van to a complete, uh, even a blood mobile. You know, they, wow. they that's what their business is. So what they need to do for their website is to show these different transformations that they make with good pictures. So I take pictures of the outside of the vehicle and the inside of the vehicle, taking really small portable lighting inside the vehicles, which is always really challenging because you don't have hardly any space to move. But uh, it's not very glamorous, but they paid well. <laughs> <laughs> now, do you, do you shoot weddings and, 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 and private events as well? I did early in my career. Okay. Um, and uh, around 2000. Eight. I think a lot of people remember that was a very difficult time for our economy. Right. And so um, my business, that was, that was before COVID, that was the last time my business had any trouble at all. And uh, back then it was a little scary because I didn't know how I was going to keep paying my bills because nobody, my phone just stopped ringing. So um, I remember early in the career shooting a lot of weddings when I was first starting out because you know, I just wanted to make money any way I could. Right. So I went back to a few weddings, and thankfully that uh, that recession we had for those few years didn't last too long because um, that's hard work, weddings. <laughs> so I backed out of that. So in t in terms of, of of COVID, was was it a big hit for commercial photographers with, with COVID? I, I know obviously people were shooting private events like weddings and things like right. that, but but. but COVID. But there weren't any private events. See, that was a big hit. And a lot of people, I, I photograph um, corporate events a lot. And okay. they weren't having any, nobody was getting together to okay. do anything. Okay. So, um, yeah, and, uh, you know, marketing directors were, were told they couldn't hire outside people to come into the company, which is what I usually do. Oh, um, wow. And their people come to my studios. Gotcha. So there's a lot of people interaction in the photography commercial photography business. And so, yeah, I was taking pictures, you know, pretty pictures, <laughs> but you know, nobody was around to buy those pretty <laughs> pictures. So um, I, 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 I used the theme of, you know, social distancing as a, a body of work that I did shoot during um, the, 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 the pandemic, but um, it, was, it was pretty upsetting. And a lot of, a lot of businesses just hesitated to hire outside. Right, and uh, right. they're still just slowly starting to come back. You know, with everybody working from home, that's right. changed everybody. So, you know, I, I, I don't feel, you know, really that bad because it, all these cliches, we're all in the same boat. You know, we all dealt with it. So. so where will we see Dan Morgan in about five years or where would you hope to be? All right. Good question. During the, um, the last couple Last year, during the pandemic, um, I got tired of, of trying to call people and ask them to hire me. So I started thinking, boy, you know, I should probably do something with some time instead of like worrying about when the phone's going to ring. So I just kept my mind open to working some part-time job somewhere. My wife, you know, kind of jokingly would say, why don't you just... Be, go to Home Depot and say hi to the people coming into the stores <laughs> and direct them. And, you know, I'm actually good at that, greeting people, but I didn't want to do that at Home Depot. Just recently, I started working two days a week at the Cleveland Museum of Art, and I am a gallery guard. And so I was trained for this position. It's a paid position. And just one weekend day and one day of the week, I'm actually at 
the Cleveland Museum of Art, which is one of Cleveland's, one of the world's greatest assets because we have a wonderful art collection and I'm around it all the time. And at first I was concerned because I wouldn't be able to talk to the guests about the art. Right. But that's what they encourage now since Griswold is his last name, is the new director of the museum. He encourages the, our guards to talk to our guests. And I, I just love it. And, and what exactly and, do, do the guards, do gallery guards do? What we do is our principal job is to, to guard the art. Oh, wow. Okay. There's a couple billion dollars worth of artwork inside that museum. And we, need, we, we have a whole team of guards that are posted every day after roll call into different galleries so that we can keep an eye on the artwork as the guests go through. But um, our second job is to make our visitors feel comfortable. And that's the part I really like. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. interesting. We all have radios. It's, it's crazy. <laughs> it's really something. I, my wife is like, I can't believe you're doing this. And, I, and, and I, I love it. It's a big surprise. I just thought I'd throw the dice and see if I would like that because I love the museum. Cleveland Museum Art is, is, is really an amazing art museum. And if you haven't been there recently, you need to go. It's free. <laughs> my final question is, uh, and I get this all the time. How does a photographer put a value on a, on a piece of art? For example, you have a price that you um, would require for someone to purchase that art. How, how, how does that work? I mean, is it time, is it be the time that you put mm -hmm. in? Is it the, the supplies that you use? Mm -hmm. how, do, how, how do they determine that? That's a good question. And you know, you gave me a list of questions, but that wasn't on it. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to throw me off here. <laughs> Anyways, um, it's, a, it's a good question. And it really is, um, it's, it's a lot like a lot of industries, um, you know, even real estate. You know, what they say a house is worth what somebody's willing to pay for it. Gotcha. Right. <laughs> um, so you kind of get a feel for what the industry is getting. You know, you, you kind of look and you talk to other photographers, but um, you, you, you base a lot of it on your, the quality of the work that you know, how you know that you can supply and, um, and your years of experience. And so like I can, even though Al will charge more than some photographers, I can get the work done in a faster time. Gotcha. So we charge by the hour. And so if I can do something in half the time for twice the price, it's the same. And they're happier because it's a better quality result. So you just kind of got to, and, and I've been pretty strong. I don't have a variety of prices for people. I, I set a price and I stick to it. So have you ever lowered a price because something didn't sell or? No, I'll lower a fee is what I call an okay. hourly fee. Um, if I believe in the cause. Okay. Um, and, and a lot of times I won't even lower the fee. I'll just decide to do it for free for somebody because I believe in the cause. Um, I'm a man of faith and uh, I have a church that I go to and I've been to a couple different churches that I've gone to and I help my church by taking photographs of the inside of their church. Um, really high quality inside of interior photos that I, I just didn't, I had no way I was going to charge them for that because of the work that they do. So um, there are, none, don't, I don't want the phone ringing off the hook for free jobs. <laughs> <laughs> so if you heard the number earlier, <laughs> forget it. Forget it. <laughs> but no, I do believe in helping out, you know, causes that are, are worth it. That's wonderful. Yeah, Thanks so much it. for coming on the show. Ah, thank you so much for having me. I'd it's like to thank my guests, my neighbor, my friend. Dan Morgan for hanging out with me today on Creative Focus. Right. So that's it, Cleveland. We're out. But remember, a true artist is not only inspired, but inspires others. I'm Cornell Huber Calhoun III for TV20 and Creative Focus. Until the next time becomes our time. Cleveland, be well. Be safe.